We're certainly more emotionally secure than toddlers. For example, have you ever told a toddler no when they asked for a sweet treat and they immediately started to sob? Ah! Ah! We both have been here to convince you to change your mind. They usually just sit there and stare at you, mouth open, tears streaming, <laughs> waiting for you to have a change of heart. And usually, we'll let toddlers scream and cry so that they learn that they don't always get what they want. And yeah, that sucks, but you have to deal with it. As, we, as a parent raises a toddler, they also want to teach them that you can't tantrum your way through life. It gets old once you do. But, bless you. But the issue, the issue arises when we don't, when we don't allow tears, when there very well should be a steady stream. For example, why is a babysitter or parents knee-jerk reaction to a child falling off a swing or scraping their knee to say, "No, no, no! It's okay! It's okay! Don't cry! Shh, it's okay!" It's okay. It's okay. It's okay, but it's obviously not. As adults and adolescents, don't we cry when we get hurt? When we instill in children early on that they should suppress their very valid tears and emotions, we are setting them up for a life of emotional suppression. As children grow, a knee scrape will turn into a broken bone, and then maybe someday a disease diagnosis or the death of a family member or friend. What do you say then? It's okay, shh, don't cry. No, go ahead, cry, because that sucks. It does, there's no way around it. Everything may very well be okay one day, but right now it's not, and that's okay. I set out to discover why we think this way. Why is our knee-jerk reaction to silence intense emotions? Are they too uncomfortable? Are they too painful? Are they socially unwelcome? I found that all of these are true. The fact of the matter is life isn't fair and karma isn't real. We'd like to think it is, but it, it simply is not. For some, whatever goes around does not come back around. Life happens, it's inevitable, but it's how you deal with the good alongside the bad that makes all of the difference for your mental health. I, for one, believe that we should appreciate the wonderful situations in life when they are in fact wonderful, but when things suck, we need to allow ourselves to feel that suck. I'm not saying you should sit there and dwell on every single negative thought that crosses your mind, but a little bit of time spent in the suck sauna will lighten your emotions. <laughs> <laughs> now, I keep mentioning suppression of emotions, but I need to explain to you exactly why not feeling your feelings is such a bad habit to fall into. When a human experiences a large-scale traumatic event, but they don't have the time or energy to deal with it right at that moment, human, humans, humans often set aside their big emotions in order to process them later on properly. This is a process called compartmentalization. Compartmentalizing is an extremely natural coping mechanism, but it does have an expiration date. When compartmentalizing becomes a permanent crutch used every day just to get by, that's when compartmentalizing becomes toxic positivity which is another coping mechanism that, you guessed it, happen it develops whenever a person experiences a large-scale traumatic event, but instead of processing it, they push those emotions deeper and deeper down because they are too painful to deal with. They then avoid the situation entirely using phrases such as, but it could be worse. But it's fine. Sound familiar? Think <coughs> of your emotional state as a backpack. Your emotional backpack can only hold so much, and if there's no relief, the backpack will just get heavier and heavier, dragging you down until eventually you fall over and start spewing out emotions all over the place. Although you may not want to, get back to COVID, quarantine, if you will. Seniors, think about how we missed out on our eighth grade goodbyes, and juniors, think about how you missed out on your Mo Ranch experience. Think of all of the vacations and birthday parties and fun times that were missed out on because we were all stuck inside. <laughs> that sucked. But now that COVID is over, many of us find ourselves putting a positive spin on things. You may have heard people say, but at least we had a home quarantine. At least I wasn't hooked up to a ventilator when I had COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> well, these statements are extremely valid to examine their context. If you're writing down what you're grateful for and you mention your cozy home and how you're grateful for being in good health, that's perfect. But imagine you're talking to a friend about the lingering effects that COVID-19 is having on your body. You mention having difficulty breathing at night or still not having a sense of smell or taste. And your friend replies, at least you weren't hooked up to a ventilator when you had COVID-19. <laughs> they just completely invalidated your very real struggles and emotions. COVID sucked and it happened and it was awful. We need to process one of the most significant events in our lives before we silence those emotions by counting our blessings and thanking our lucky star. I'm not saying that you should sit there in the darkness and wallow in a pit of despair and never be grateful for the sweet parts of life, but I'm simply warning you of the dangers that arise when we don't allow ourselves to feel challenging feelings. In order to live more emotionally accurate lives and confront feelings in a healthy way, we need to stop. Stop forcing others to look on the bright side and stop forcing yourself to paint on a smile and be grateful that although things suck right now, they could be worse. The pain that you are feeling and the trauma that you are enduring is painful and it's scary, but most importantly, it's valid. 
Don't allow yourself or anyone else to convince you that you don't have a right to feel that pain simply because someone somewhere has it worse. To live more emotionally accurate lives, we need to do the following steps. Communicate. Communication is key. If you believe you've fallen a victim to a toxic positive mindset, reach out, ask for help. There are plenty of online counseling resources such as eTherapy Pro and BetterHelp that are great for booking same day appointments and receiving long term help. Many are also free of cost and entirely online, meaning no transportation required. And whether you have to keep reminding your mom or take it upon yourself to make that first appointment, sometimes if you want to get better, you have to put your healing in your own hands. Set a boundary. Toxically positive thinkers truly believe that they're being helpful, kind, and supportive by spewing their toxic positivity all over you. But if they are, call them out. Ask them to stop. Set that boundary. And if they continue to cross the line, distance yourself. Pain travels from person to person until someone is ready and capable of feeling it. Some live their entire lives with the ultimate goal of one day becoming truly and authentically happy, so they avoid negativity entirely, hoping that it'll transport them to the life of their dreams, but avoiding it is the greatest curse. Pain demands to be felt, and to live is to feel, so let's start feeling so we can start living. Thank you.